Good day, people of God. It's Pastor Jeremiah, also known as Pastor Loic. We'd like to hear the word of God for the week. But before we do so, we would like to say a word of prayer. So you have rest to our Heavenly Father. Let us bow our head and let us pray. Blessed and wonderful God, exalted King, Almighty Savior, thank you for this new occasion that you're giving unto us to be found in your presence. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And we surrender ourselves, body, soul, and sweet mind and heart, the heaven, the, the earth, and the, the heaven and around us and in us. We surrender everything unto you. We pray that you take full control of everything. And we humble ourselves and asking for your mercy. We pray that you forgive us. Whatever we may have done, said or thought that is not honor or glorifies you. And that you purify and sanctify us, body, soul, and sweet, with the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, the blood that will shine on the cross of Calvary. And we take authority and we stand against anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of the truth, any principality of the kingdom of darkness, any rulers of the kingdom of darkness, any wicked spirit in the high places, any uh, 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 evil power, any evil influence that would like to hinder us from receiving from you. Let them be bound and cast into the pit of hell in the name of Jesus Christ. And we proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We thank you, we bless you, asking you to take us deeper and deeper into the understanding and the revelation of your truth. In Jesus Christ, and we prayed. Amen. So we take our main passage of the Holy Scripture in the book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. So reading the word of God in the book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 6 in the name of Jesus Christ. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in the flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will not turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush, and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Yea, am I. And he said, Draw not nigh, hide. Put off your shoes from off your feet. For the place whereon you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. May the Lord bless his word, may come full of understanding, revelation, grace, life, and blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. So for this week, the Lord would like to speak to us about three signs given to Moses. So the title of our teaching for this week is Three Signs Given to Moses. The bush in this passage of the Holy Scripture refers to the thorn bush which is a bunch of shrubs with thorns on the branches. We need to have this precision in order for us to understand why the thorn bush was burning and yet it was not consumed by the fire. And the book of Judges gives us more insight about the thorn bush. In Judges chapter 9, verse 14 to 15, which says, Finally, all the trees said to the thorn bush, Come and be our king. The thorn bush said to the trees, If you really want to anoint me king over you, come and take refuge in my shade. But if not, then let fire come out of the thorn bush and consume the cedars of Lebanon. We thus understand that fire ought to come out of the thorn bush. Hence, there is a correlation between the fire and the thorn bush because they represent two dispensations. The fire represents the dispensation of the Old Testament. For God manifested Himself to the people of Israel in the wilderness with a pillar of fire during the night. God also came down on Mount Sinai to speak to the people of Israel through fire and thundering in such a way that Moses said that God is a consuming fire. God also answered the prophet Elijah by sending down fire 
to consume the altar that Elijah had built for God. And again, Elijah called fire to come down from heaven to consume the soldiers that King Ahab had sent to arrest him. The thorn portrayed the new covenant or the new testament. So the dispensation of the new covenant. Because the, Ro the Roman soldiers put a, th a crown of thorns on the head of Jesus Christ. Even as the book of John tells us in John chapter 19 verse 2 which says, And the soldier plated a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe. And the reason a crown of thorns had to be put on the head of Jesus Christ is because when Adam and Eve sinned against God, the earth was cursed. And the earth was thus meant to produce thorns and thistles, even as God declared in Genesis chapter 3, verse 17 to 18, which says, And unto Adam he said, Because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife, and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns also and thistle shall it bring forth to you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. Thus, Jesus Christ had to ha have a crown of thorns put on his head so that the curse upon the earth be broken. We cannot understand why the thorns bush was burning, but it was not being consumed. For it was to prophesy, for this was to prophesy that Jesus Christ still needs to use the thorns in order to break the curse that was upon the earth. He still needed to use the thorns in order to break the curse that was upon the earth. In our main passage of the Holy Scriptures, we thus see the angel of God speaking unto Moses. In other terms, God manifested unto Moses through the burning bush, the burning thorn bush. And God came down to call Moses into ministry. Moses was therefore called by God among the many human beings that were upon the earth at that time. God called Moses to be his servant. And this is well portrayed in the meaning of the name Moses. For the name Moses means drawn or taken out of the waters. Even as described in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 2 verse 10 which says, and the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and became a son. And he became a son, and she called his name Moses. And she said, Because I drew him out of the water. And the book of Revelation explained to us the meaning of the waters. Revelation chapter 17 verse 15 which says, And he said unto me, the water which you saw, where you, the war sits, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Hence the name Moses means drawn or taken from among peoples. Thus God chose Moses from among the people of Israel in particular and from among human beings in general so that Moses could become the instrument of God upon the earth. Moses therefore represents those leaders who have been called by God. And as God was calling Moses, Moses replied unto God that the people of Israel will not believe that it is God indeed who sent him unto them. Exodus chapter 4 verse 1 which says, And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor he can unto my voice. They will say, the Lord has not appeared unto you. And this is the reason why God gave three signs unto Moses so that when the people will see Moses performing these signs, people will believe that he has 
indeed been sent by God. And because Moses represents these leaders who have been called by God, hence, if the people want to know if someone has truly been called by God, they need to check if such a person produces the very same signs that God has given to Moses. The first sign is found in Exodus chapter 4 verse 2 to 5 which says, And the Lord said unto Moses, What is your name? Uh, what, what is that in your hand? And he said, A rope. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth your hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it. And he became a road in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared unto you. The first sign that God has given to Moses to perform so that the people so that people will believe that it is God who sent him is to capture the serpent and this serpent is Satan even as the book of Revelation tells us in Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 which says and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceives the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angel were cast out with him Hence, the first sign that a man of God or a woman of God need to produce in order for the people to believe that he is sent by God is to capture, the, to capture Satan, to use your ministry, which is represented by the, the road, to use the ministry to capture Satan. And how do you capture Satan? Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 says, it, Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 told us that Satan, the old serpent, is a deceiver. Thus, the first thing that a leader ought to do in order to capture Satan is to expose all the deception of Satan. For Satan introduced sin to human beings by deceiving Eve by telling her the following in Genesis chapter 3 verse 4 to 5 which says, And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. Here, Satan said to Eve that if she eats of the fruit which God said they must not eat, she will be like God. In other words, she will, be, she will look like God. But when God created Adam and Eve, he made them to be in his image and in his own likeness. Even as the book of Genesis states in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 27 which says, And God said, Let us make men in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. This is telling us that Eve was already like God, for she was created and made in the image and likeness of God. Thus when Satan was saying to Eve that she, should, she would be like God if she eats the fruit that God has forbidden them to eat, Satan was thus deceiving Eve. Hence, the deception of Satan is to make people believe that they are not what God has made them to be. And this is the reason why Jesus Christ said in John chapter 8 verse 44, You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And the book of Hosea states in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The first part of the verse. So in other terms, because people refuse 
to hold the truth, to spend time in the word of God. Therefore, they are destroyed by the deception of the devil. And Jesus Christ added in John chapter 8 verse 32 to say, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. He continues in, verse, in chapter 17 verse 17. He says, Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. So by speaking the truth of the word of God, you will actually dismantle the lies of, and the deception, the seduction of the devil. Thus you need to preach and teach the true word of God in order to expose all the deception of Satan. And by doing so, you will also repeal the works of darkness, knowing that Satan is called the prince of darkness. Thus by preaching and teaching the word of God, you are causing the works of darkness to disappear from for the word of God is the light even as Psalm 119 verse 105 tells us and lastly you will notice that when the serpent moves he does not go straight for he moves in zigzag this portrays people who are not fully settled in Christ people who still have one foot in the world and the other in the church. In other terms, they claim to be Christian, but they still live a life of sin. You therefore need to preach to them in such a way that they sincerely convert from their crook and evil ways, the same manner John the Baptist preached to the Pharisees and the Sadducees by calling them to genuine repentance, for they were acting like the devil and this is why John the Baptist called them a generation of vipers. Matthew chapter 3 verse 7 to 8 which says, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruit meet for repentance. And this is therefore how you can capture Satan, the old serpent. And this is the first sign that will tell the people that you have been sent by God. And this is why Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 17 to 18, He said, And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpent. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall, lay, they shall lay hand upon the sick and they shall recover. So among the signs that God has given to us to do is to hold the serpent. Another term to hold the, 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 the to capture Satan, to capture the devil by exposing his lies, by preaching the truth, to cause people to change the way of walking. So that they can walk straight and no longer walk like hypocrite, like the devil in zigzag. The second sign can be found in Exodus chapter 4 verse 6 to 8 which says, And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now your hand into your bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put your hand into your bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass. If they will not believe you, neither he can to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. So the second sign that will tell the people that Moses have, had been sent by God is the fact that when Moses will put his hand into his bosom, it will become lepro it will become leprous as he takes it out of his bosom. And when he will put it the second time, it will be restored from its leprosy. And when someone had leprosy in the time of Moses, God instructed that such a person be kept outside the camp, even as described in the book of Leviticus. In Leviticus chapter 13 verse 46, which says, All the days 
wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defied. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone without the camp shall his habitation be. And this is the reason why when Miriam murmured against Moses, God plagued her with leprosy for seven days and she was kept outside the camp for seven days. Number chapter 12 verse 9 to 10 and verse 15 which says, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and she departed and and he departed and the cloud departed from the tabernacle and behold Miriam became leprous white as snow and Aaron looked upon Miriam and behold she was leprous verse 15 and Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again in this also and and this is also the reason why the people of Israel spent 40 years in the wilderness because they disbelieved God by refusing to go and possess the promised land of Canaan even as God instructed them. Thus God made made them to stay outside the promised land by wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. And all this is to say that when you when when people disbelieve God when they doubt God, when they refuse to obey God, they will be kept far away from the promises of God. And this is therefore why the person who has been called by God must warn the people of this truth. And moreover, people put their hand on their bosom when they want to make an offer. And the bosom is also a representation of engendering giving birth for it is with the breast that a mother feeds the baby that she has given birth to as a result hence by putting his hand onto his bosom Moses was implicitly making a promise unto God but what type of promise was it we can recall that God presented himself unto Moses as being the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob God did not say that he was the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob but God clearly used the present tense to make it clear that he is presently the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob thus God was simply implying unto Moses that he must promise to bring the people of Israel to the same faith that Abraham had in God. For when God instructed Abraham to go to the place where God will show unto him, Abraham did not hesitate to leave his biological family and to leave his native country, his house. Abraham forsook all to follow God even as the word of God tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8 to 10 which says by faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance obey he went out not knowing whether he went by faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob the heirs with him of the same promise. And this is therefore the kind of faith that God wants to see in his people. And this is why Abraham is called the father of all those who believe in God. Romans chapter 4 verse 16 which says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Galatians chapter 3 verse 7 continues to say, Therefore now that only those who are of faith are the sons of Abraham. And Galatians chapter 3 verse 9, 29 uh, concludes to say, And if you be Christ, in other words, if you belong to Christ, then are you 
Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That's the second sign that will tell the people that you have been sent by God is when you cause the people to have the same faith of Abraham. In other terms, when you cause people to sacrifice everything for God, meaning they ought to love God more than anything. And this is why Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 10 verse 37, He that loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. This is therefore putting your hand into your bosom. For you are fulfilling the promise that you made unto God to bring back the people to the same faith of Abraham. This is why when Lazarus the beggar died, he went into the bosom of Abraham in heaven, even as the book of Luke chapter 16 verse 22 tells us. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angel into Abraham's bosom. The first part of the verse. The last sign, the third sign, is found in Exodus chapter 4 verse 9, which says, And it came to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither he can unto your voice, that you shall take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land, and the water which you take out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. The third and last sign that will tell the people that Moses had been sent by God is changing water into blood. And the book of Leviticus tells us that life is in the blood. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 which says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, the first part of the verse. Thus the blood represent life. And through the prophet Jeremiah, God tells us that he is the living water. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13 which says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hooed them out citizens, broken citizens, that cannot hold, that can hold no water. And Jesus Christ tells us again the following in John chapter 7 verse 38, He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Thus, as a person believes in Jesus Christ, rivers of living water will flow out of his belly. In other terms, because you receive Jesus Christ in your life, you will bring forth rivers of living water because Jesus Christ is the fountain of living waters. We can therefore understand that the third sign, which consists of changing water into blood, is the prophecy of Jesus Christ who gave his life for the redemption of humanity. Jesus Christ being the fountain of the living waters. And this is the reason why when the Roman soldier pierced the, uh, Jesus Christ on the side with a spear, water and blood came out of Jesus Christ even as the book of John attests in John chapter 19 verse 34 which says, but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. Thus, the blood represents the life of Jesus Christ, which he gave for the salvation of humanity. And this is well represented by the cup of wine that Jesus Christ gave to his disciples to drink. For this cup of wine represents the new covenant in which Jesus Christ causes those who believe in him to enter into. Matthew chapter 26 verse 27 to 28 which says, And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for it is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. And this is also why Jesus Christ changed water into wine in the marriage of Cana in John chapter 2, verse 1 to 11. Hence the third and last sign that would tell the people that you have been sent by God is when you bring people to enter into a lifetime covenant with God by causing them to believe in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In that they sincerely accept Jesus Christ in their life as their Savior and Lord. 
And these are therefore the three signs that will tell the people that someone has truly been sent by God. Hence, people must look for this sign, these three signs in every leader who pretends or claims to be called by God. Hence, we want to pray to say, Thank you, Heavenly Father, for imparting me with this knowledge and understanding of your word. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will help me to present to the people these three signs so that they may believe that you have sent me unto them for you have instructed us to go into all the world and make all nations your disciples. Help me therefore, Lord Jesus Christ, to capture Satan, the old serpent, by exposing all his deception and lies through the preaching and the teaching of the true doctrine of your word, and by causing people to forsake their evil ways of hypocrisy to live a life of sanctification in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray also in the name of Jesus Christ, so that you will help me to bring people, including myself, to have the same faith of Abraham, who forsook everything to follow you. Help me therefore to do so, and to cause people all over the world to forsake also everything for your sake. Help us to love you more than anything in the name of Jesus Christ. And again, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, so that you will help me also to remain in a perpetual covenant with you. And that I also bring people all over the, the earth to enter in a lifetime covenant with you by making them to sincerely accept Jesus Christ in their life as their Savior and Lord. I thank you, Abba Father, glorious and wonderful Savior, the only true God, Yahweh. Thank you for hearing me and for answering me accordingly. May you be forever magnified in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.